Welcome everybody. Today we are going to recap the final season and the Detroit Tiger franchise. We win the AO Central for the first time since 2014. And uh, the Tigers had their first 100 win season since 1984. And that season they won the World Series. Now the other time they had a 100 plus season 100 win plus season was 1968 when they went 103 and 59 so I would say history is on our side Tigers have won the World Series without winning 100 games but uh not only do we set a record winning season with 109 wins um we have been the favorites all year long to win the division to go to the postseason to get to the world series we've just been pretty good now we suffered some injuries uh harrison bader jose alvarado zach gallon brendan donovan Gallon, Donovan, and Bader should be back. Bader is back. He played the final two games of the regular season against San Francisco and looked really good. Uh, Gallon and Donovan should be good to go in the playoffs. The one guy we're going to miss big time is Willie Adamas. Obviously, he was one of the bigger moves we made in the offseason, this being in free agency. Well, he didn't have a stellar year. He, he was just overall pretty solid. He was able to get a lot of runs batted in, and that's really why we brought him here. We didn't at one like 30 plus homers, or would it have been nice if he was a elite shortstop? Of course, it would have. I mean, he's not bad. But he also went through some rough times during the season and offensively and defensively. But overall, it was a really good signing for us. And, uh, yeah, we're good. Uh, it sucks he's going to miss the rest of the year because getting Bader back and if we could have gotten, if we could have been 100% healthy going into the postseason, I would be pretty confident. But now that we're going to be missing a key offensive guy uh i'm gonna be a little worried because scott mcdaniel didn't have a great year ikf is not an everyday shortstop and it's really gonna be dependent on this starting rotation can scooball go five plus can hunter green go five plus jose barrios he's not had a stellar year in toronto he's not had a stellar year since getting to detroit he's played a couple nice games but he hasn't been perfect can he be five plus will the rookie jackson job make the playoff roster i would assume he should he's been very impressive i think he could be somebody we could rely on big time Hopefully Gallant's someone that's one back for the playoffs and two someone we can depend on. I'm pretty confident in this bullpen. Carl Edwards has been a solid pitcher for us. Lucas is a left-handed pitcher. Uh, left-handed shutdown pitcher against left-handed batters. Jose Alvarado, he can be he had a real nice year this year after getting hurt. Yeah, definitely earned why he got that big contract from us in season one. And then Jordan Hicks. Hicks kind of got knocked around this year. Kind of got brought down to earth. Um, he wasn't bad, but he also wasn't what he was a year ago. Obviously, Craig, he was our closer for most of the year, and now we got Josh Hader back or here and Dylan who's had a real good year he got hurt last year and I think that really hurt when hurt him when he came back 
so I'm pretty confident our bullpen having to come in around like the sixth inning if need be. Uh, but overall, I'm a little worried. I'm scared. We've had a excellent year, and uh, if it just comes crumbling down because of one player's out offensively. I think despite having two successful years in a row, our job should be in jeopardy if we uh, can't figure it out. Uh, let's take a look at Jake McCarthy. A lot of these stats are going to be from what he did in Arizona. He was okay. He wasn't spectacular when he got traded for. Austin Meadows, what did he do backing up his MVP type year? He played one less game. That's I think that's just because we haven't sinned yet. Um, overall, I think he kind of have a had a little bit more of a down year. I don't really think he should have been in the MVP running this year. I mean, only reason why is because of his RBIs. But, I mean, he wasn't bad, but he was kind of meh this year. It was like he either got the big hit or he didn't. Obviously, Harrison Bader, if he did not get hurt in the summer, I think he would have been a, a uh, silver slugger, not to me, not to me and the uh, center field because he was going to have a really good year. I think he probably would have gotten the 16, maybe 18 homers this year. And... Uh, yeah, he was just playing lights out. And I, I hated it when he got hurt. Riley Green, let's talk about Riley Green. Now, Riley Green was not here a year ago. He was down at AAA. And this year, he's back, and he played really, really good. Mainly against left-handed pitching for Kerry Carpenter. But Riley Green, he is going to be special. And he is special. Jonathan Daza, I really like trading for Daza. He uh, kind of took the uh, left-handed pitching row as well, and he played pretty well. I killed Badu. Now, Badu's homers, well, about the same. And he kind of had the same year, back-to-back -back years. He did miss, or not play as many games this year. But, uh, Nobody who's just been kind of okay the past couple years. I really like Badu. I do. I somebody who's definitely getting a lot better just now against left-handed pitching is Kerry Carpenter, and it's not that he's terrible against left-handed pitching. He just does not see the ball as well, just like Eric Haas against right-handed pitching. He, they does not see the ball as well, which I'm still really like. I don't even have the words for Eric Haas. Like, I'm not sure what happened to him from year one to now. Like, year one, he was a different breed of catcher. He was an all-star. He won a silver slugger, I believe. And... I mean, he had a bounce-back year, but most of these homers, I can guarantee you, were from left-handed pitching. Like, he's not a bad catcher, but I just don't know what happened to him. But back to the outfield, shall we? Kerry Carpenter, he's, uh, he's gotten better as the years have progressed. And I think if his building was a little bit better, he would be a very high demand of a player. But the thing that's holding him back is his fielding ability. Talked about both of them. Scott McDaniel, the rookie now. He uh, kind of played the backup role to Brendan Donovan in his rookie year. Uh, kind of got the start more 
down the line. Two career homers, eight seconds basement, 27 hits, 12 runs, 13 RBIs. He, uh, he's a switch hitter. I like him more against right-handed pitching than I do against left-handed pitching right now. Um, overall, Scott McDaniel, I think, could be a solid third baseman. And I, I kind of hate that it's, this is our final year because I could see Scott McDaniel having a big second year. Colt Keith is not far behind Scott McDaniel. I really wish we could do another year, but I do feel like this has to be the last year. Colt Keith is... He would be a very special player to see play. And you could argue that Colt could probably be a little bit better than Scott McDaniel. You could argue that. Brendan Rodgers in his first year on a new team for the first time in his career. He left the National League to the American League. And he kind of had the same year. He kind of did. He had less hits this year. He kind of struggled against right-handed pitching. He was a little bit better against left-handed. He had a very, very rough start to his Detroit Tiger campaign. And a lot of fans and critics, including me, were like, uh-oh. Did we make the bad deal? Did we make a bad trade? Did we get fleeced? Defensively, he was outstanding. We, sh we saw why he's a gold glove defender. But we were hoping he would kind of come into the year with a chip on his shoulder and go off. We were hoping he would be the MVP of the team. And he was just kind of flat at times. He was solid, don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed playing with Brendan Rodgers. But he's not over elite. Very good, not elite. Uh, Jace Jung, like, we would really have to know if he's ready. I, he simmed into a lot of games, hit the ball pretty well, it seems. Um,. I think he would absolutely have to be on the roster if there were to be a year four to know what we have in him. Um, I think he's a good fielder and a good runner. I just don't know about his bat. Uh, Brendan Donovan. Donovan was very good as well. He was going to have double digit home runs this year. And I think he could have been in contention for a silver slugger as well. 67 RBIs. Now he got hurt late down the stretch. But uh, Brandon Donovan was definitely very solid offensively. Defensively, he kind of scared me this year. He kind of had a little bit more airs. And uh, made me a little worried. He didn't do it every time. He just had a couple whoopsies. But I think he was going to have double digit home runs. Uh, Garrett Cooper. Cooper won the Gold Glove a year ago. He got hurt before the All-Star break, I want to say. Or he came back before the All-Star break. Garrett Cooper had a solid year. He really did. He made more whoopsies this year than he did a year ago. But overall, he had a pretty good year. Jess 
Vogel. I'm going to miss Jess Vogel. Five home runs in his rookie year, 17 RBIs, 11 double, 42 hits, 19 runs. Like Jess had his everyday first baseman attempt early in the year. And you could have argued that he could have won the job over Garrett Cooper and stayed everyday first baseman, but we weren't going to do Cooper dirty. He won a go glove a year ago. Jess Vogel would be the superstar of the infield. He is really, really good. Left handed pitching. Right handed pitching. Yeah, kind of needs to work on his right handed pitching a little bit more, but he is a special kid. And he would be very special for years to come. You could argue that Jess Vogel would be on pace to be the next Miggy for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Maurice Taylor retrained for from Miami, I believe, at the deadline just to be the backup catcher. Spent a lot of time down at AAA when we got him. But he would be a very solid catcher as well. Now, let's go through the cal calendar year starting off at the beginning of the year. You can see the wins. You can see the losses. Very strong April for us. And I want to say June, late May, mid-June maybe is when Gary Cooper may have gotten hurt. Because we, uh, we weren't that great in the month of June. The month of July, we had a much better month of July. Uh, I want to say this was when Bader got hurt. Right around here. Or in that last game against Cleveland. We had a decent month of August. And a decent last month of September. Now let's go through stats. Even though you guys just saw everything. The most wins on the team were go to Scooball. Who, uh... I think if we can... The more years he would get, the better he would become. I think he's a pretty solid pitcher. I think he's turning that page into becoming a very elite pitcher in the game. Right now... Austin Meadows leads in batting average for the American League over Carlos Correa, who had an outstanding year. National League goes to Freddie Freeman over Juan Soto and uh, Mookie Betts. Hits goes to Juan Soto. Meadows with 205. Royce Lewis has the most at bats. Trey Turner for the National League. Brian Reynolds for Pittsburgh. And it's a tie with Tim Anderson and Austin Meadows. Tim Anderson, I understand. How does Meadows have the most doubles on our team, though?
triples goes to Roy Smooth. Wow. Tatis Jr. tied with Turner and Cronenworth and O'Neill Cruz. A four way tie. 42 home runs for Riley and Soto. Nothing compared to Vladdy with 51. Meadows with the RBIs. Tatis Jr. with the RBIs in the National League. Horner with the most runs batted in. Vladdy and Andres Jimenez at 107. Brandy leads the American League with 33 stolen bases. Starling Marte puts that to shame. At his age of 36. That's a crazy stat for a 36 year old. Juan Soto with 97 right there. Aaron Judge with 98. Austin Meadows leads this category. Juan Soto leads the category in the National League. Tatis Jr. Austin Meadows. Austin Meadows. Juan Soto. <laughs> Mitch Keller wins 17 games, tied with Casey Mize and John Means. 20 games won for Aaron Nola. Armand Marquez, 17 in his first year with Cleveland. Noah also leads with four losses. Or, yeah, wins with four losses. Matt Manning with also four losses as well. Dominguez with 53 saves. Penn with 51. Nola with the ERA. Scooball fifth. Julio wins it in the National League. Wow, Casey Mice fell down there. John Means allowed the most home runs in the National League, along with Antonio. Jose Suarez allowed the most in the American League. Logan Gilbert has four shutouts. While Max Freed has six. Shane Bieber with 206. The Gram with 218. Nola with six complete games on the year. Freed with six as well. A lot of innings pitched for Freed. A lot more for Nola. The less walk pitcher, the pitcher to walk the less, we get that one. Syndergaard and Casey Mize over there. Julio Nola. Otani. Shane. Manny Machado. Carlos Correa. And with that being said, we are ready to say goodbye to the final regular season and is off to the playoffs also the awards double a will not get a championship and i believe our triple a team also missed the playoffs this year
The postseason schedule looks like this. Philly will host the Mets. The Cubs will host Pittsburgh as the Cubs won the NL Central. Atlanta is the one seed. San Francisco is the two seed in the National League. While we are the one seed, Tampa is the two seed in the American League. Houston will host Boston. And the Texas Rangers will host Seattle. So Cleveland loses three games in a row and miss out on the playoffs. While Seattle lost their final game of the regular season and the Cleveland won, they would have gotten in. Let's take a look at the National League standings. While the Dodgers and the Padres miss the postseason. Wow. We already went through all that. The MVP for this year. Austin Meadows goes back to back. Oops. Tatis Jr. Go, uh, gets it. Has early become the San Diego Award. But it don't matter. They're not in the postseason. Sion goes to Sandy. That would be his second one, right? Nola gets one. No, oh, Tani won it a year ago. Meadows. Gets the batting title this year. Wow, won a, a year ago. Freddie Freeman in the National League. Andrew Chafin for Atlanta. Andres Munoz for the White Sox. Hank Chick, solid rookie year. Rob Green. Yep. Juan Soto for Pittsburgh. Austin Meadows this year. Otani gets another gold glove. I believe he already has one, right? No, Matt Manning won eight, a year ago. My bad. I think he still has one in real life though. Antonio wins one for Colorado. JT gets the gold glove for the catcher. Alejandro Kirk gets it. Over Eric Haas. Vladdy wins it. Christian Walker gets it. Walker left Arizona. Hmm. Ozzy gets it. Jorge Mateo gets it over Brandon Rogers. The one year we don't have scope. <laughs> Matt Chapman. Manny Machado. Over Nolan. That's very surprising. Dansby Swanson. Carlos Correa. Dalton Varsho. Stephen Kwan. Wednesday again. Jazz Chisholm. Colton Kowser. Tyler O'Neill in the running here. Bader probably would have had a chance to go back to back if he didn't get hurt. I don't know. Well, Myers. Tatis Jr. Trace Thompson gets a silver slugger as a DH. Meadows goes back to back on that. Tyler Stevenson. William Contreras. Reese Hoskins. Vladdy. 
If Derek Cooper didn't get hurt, I think he will be in contention for that. Brandon Lau. Nico Horner. Manny Machado. Continues to dominate. Rafi Dever. Carlos Correa, Trey Turner, Tatis Jr., Aaron Judge, Mike Trout, Juan Soto, Mookie Betts, Austin Hayes. Then it would be postseason awards. All right. So let's sim. Who will our Detroit Tigers have to face? And a postseason this year. It will be Houston. A rematch of the wild card. Houston beats Boston. Seattle knocks out Texas. Cubs and Pittsburgh are tied. Philly and Atlanta will go at it. But we get Houston again and this time this time the first two games are in Detroit and cold Detroit for the first two games I like the sound of that see y'all there time for some revenge 